I've been really enjoying using my Shapeoko 5 Pro CNC for the past few months. And as you can see from my waste board, I've been running it a lot. What's up everybody, welcome back to my garage where we learn about lasers, CNC's, and more. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by, and I'm especially thankful for those of you who decided to tune in again. Thanks for coming back. Today we'll be replacing my old waste board with a new design that I came up with, and I'll tell you where you can download that design for free so you can make it yourself. So one of the great things about that Shapeoko 5 Pro, and all their units for that matter, is that they do come with the waste board already included. You don't need to do anything or purchase anything after the fact. The waste board that they supply with this machine, they call the hybrid table. Now what it is, is a series of three inch wide MDF slats that are screwed down to an aluminum frame, and there's an aluminum extrusion channel in between each one of these. This gives you a great work surface, and most importantly, lots of clamping options, because in each one of these channels, you can place either one of the clamps that they provide or make your own. On my CNC projects, I personally prefer to hold down my material with clamps whenever at all possible. I just think it gives you really safe and secure work holding without some of the fuss and mess from CA glues or double-sided tape. Those definitely have their place in certain situations, but if at all possible, I always try to clamp. The MDF on the hybrid table is three quarters of an inch thick, so it's thick enough to surface three or four times depending on how deep you go. So overall, the original slats on the hybrid table are awesome. They work great. But let's see if we can make them a little bit better. So in my new design, I've incorporated a series of dog holes for a removable fence, and also a series of holes with threaded inserts for even more clamping capabilities. Something I've run into with the original hybrid table is every once in a while, I'd be trying to clamp down a piece of material, and the T-slats were just not quite in the right position to be able to get a clamp where I wanted it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In this example, I placed down about a 14 inch by 24 inch board. And you can see here on the right side when I have it pushed up against the left edge of the work surface, it's just past this T-slot here. So I'm not able to clamp in this location like I would like to. Now, I could position the board up a little bit higher and get a clamp here and a clamp here if I'd like. But in some situations, I may not be able to do that, especially if I have a bigger piece and I'm trying to use the full two by four or close to it surface of this machine. So what would be really great is if I had a couple holes here on this slat that I'm able to place clamps. So having all of these threaded inserts on my table has been really great and I found it very useful. But even so, there's still times when I've wanted a clamp in a position that I quite wasn't able to reach. But that's another great part about this system. It's fully customizable, even when the slats are still on the table. So if I found a situation where I wanted some more holes, I can either mark them on my board, take some measurements, create a new file, and make a new piece. I could modify the existing piece by taking it off and doing the same thing. Or I can create another file and actually cut the particular hole that I'm looking for while the pieces are still on the table. I just have to make sure I don't go all the way through the piece because then I'd be going into the aluminum channel underneath. So my preference is to either take the slat out and remachine it or cut a brand new piece. And that's what I've done in this situation. You can see here on this slat, I really wish I had a hole here, a hole here, and a hole here for different clamping. So what I've done is made a mark, made some measurements, and I've altered my file to cut a new slat to replace this one. Now I've had these slats on the machine since about September testing this. And one other change that I made is I moved these two threaded inserts up about an inch and a half, so they're closer to this dog hole here, which we'll talk about later. I've also incorporated that file on my new slat design. And on the free files that you can download, this change has already been made. So another change that I've made to my slat file is I have inserted a series of 20 millimeter dog holes into select slats. And what that allows me to do is to use 20 millimeter dogs. Now I just 3D printed these real quick and they work great for my use, but this will fit any standard 20 millimeter dog. And if you like three quarter inch dogs, all you gotta do is alter the file, it's real easy. So with these dogs and my stops here, I have always got an easily referenceable X and Y zero point. So if you don't have these green stops here, another thing you can do is take two of these dogs or additional dogs and move them up here into this vertical orientation. 
And now you have your X and Y reference point. The trade-off is I lose a little bit of machining space here on the table, but what I also gain is the ability to clamp in additional areas on the slats by having it up about three inches. For me, that works. Okay, so let's go cut our new slat. All right, so here's our new slap. So the file that you can download I have set up for three quarter inch material. In my area, I'm able to source one inch MDF. And I like using that because now I'm able to get even more cleanup passes on this. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So let's get some threaded inserts in this, throw it on the machine and get the whole thing surfaced. So to install the threaded inserts, what I've done is flipped the slat upside down. I know it's upside down because the mounting holes where this connects to the machine does not have the countersink. The threaded inserts that I'm gonna be using are made by Easy Lock. Now these are my favorite threaded inserts to use because they do not have a flange and they also come with this really easy installation tool. You have to buy this separately, but it's only about 10 bucks. I'll leave this in the description below so you can check it out if you'd like. But this tool makes them super easy to install. I'll show you. So I do like to install them from the back. And the reason is that gives you the most space from the front side. If you're gonna surface this, this gives you the most room possible. However, you can also install them from the front. Now let's imagine that this slat was actually on our machine. This is now facing up. You can still go through the top. The only thing is using this tool now, my threaded insert is only going to be about an eighth of an inch below the surface. But one thing you can do is take an Allen key and hand tighten this the rest of the way, and that'll bring it further down. Okay, so now all we got to do is take out the old slat and pop in the new one. So the next step in this process is to surface our entire wasteboard. Now this is not mandatory. I've been running this wasteboard without surfacing since September. And for my uses, it's been plenty flat enough. But if you really want to go that extra mile, takes that extra step to make sure that your wasteboard is completely flat, surfacing it is the way to go. It's also a really important step in tramming your CNC's router or spindle. Tramming is the process of making sure that your spindle or router is perfectly perpendicular to your wasteboard. We're not gonna go into that in detail right now, but if you wanna check out, I'll link a couple cool videos on how to tram your CNC. All right, let's go ahead and get the surfacing file loaded up and get this thing started. Now, the bit that I'm gonna be using to surface my wasteboard is this one and a half inch cutter. This is specifically designed for surfacing, and I got this from Garrett at IDC Woodcraft. This video is not sponsored. He doesn't know me or anything. I just bought it with my own money. I think it's a pretty cool bit and it should make short work of this flattening. If you're interested in this bit, I'll leave a link to it down below. And another note, whenever you're servicing either the 2x4 or the 4x4 Shapeoko 5 Pro, you need to make sure that you disable the bit setter and that you actually remove it from the machine or else the bit will hit it. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have any clamps or any stop blocks or anything on my side rails here just to make sure everything's out of the way. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you're liking this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Doing so really helps the channel and allows us to keep making new content. All right, so there we have it. Our new wasteboards installed and it is flattened. 
So remember, if you're interested in making these for your own Shapeoko 5 Pro 2x4, I have the free carbide create file listed on cutrocket.com. I'm going to leave a link to that website and the posting down in the description below. So you can download it totally free. Remember, the file that I uploaded to Cutrocket is based off of three quarter inch material. So if you're going to use one inch MDF like I did, you'll have to make that change. So if you're not interested in making the file yourself, but you'd still like to have an extra wasteboard, I might have one other option. So I'm considering selling these wasteboard slats as a kit online. If you'd be interested in something like that, leave that down below in the comments. If there's enough interest, I'll definitely produce some and post them to my online store. Well, what do you think? Is that something you'd be interested in? Let me know in the comments below and I'll keep you updated in the future. So all in all, I really love the hybrid table that comes on the Shapeoko 5 Pro. It really makes securing projects easy and the slats are easy to replicate if they get damaged. But I think that these slight modifications that I made to the hybrid table slat really bring it to the next level and add some versatility to an already excellent machine. By the way, if you're interested in seeing my full review on this Shapeoko 5 Pro, go ahead and click this link here. All right, well, that's it for this week. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you're liking the content. And if you have any questions or comments or you just want to say what's up, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you on the next one.